2021 will be here before you know it. And in this video, let's talk a little bit about some of the guideline changes for that time frame proposed by the American Medical Association. Hi, I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key. And on this channel, we provide you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified marketable medical coder. If you are new to our channel, welcome. Please feel free to look over our videos, like, comment, and share our videos. And if you're not a subscriber, by all means, click that subscribe button and be a part of our community. Don't forget to hit the bell for notifications when we upload new content. As part of the patient over paperwork initiative, last year CMS released guidance on its plans for changes to outpatient office evaluation and management services. Well, not to lag behind, the American Medical Association, or AMA, who is responsible for CPT, has released its guidance that will also be implemented in 2021. Briefly, let's review the AMA's changes. The AMA's changes are in line with CMS's proposed changes, and basically they are as follows. New guideline sections within e &M, modifying the definition of time-based services and what is included in time, the new definitions for the medical decision-making components of an e &M service, removing history and exam as key components, and deleting 99201. First, let's talk about the new guideline sections within e &M. The guidelines would be divided into three sections. One section would be guidelines common to all e &M services. Another section would be specific to outpatient or office services. And then the last section would include all services or all other services for e &M code, such as the emergency department or inpatient services. Next, modifying the definition of time-based services Right now, a provider may only use time with counseling and coordination of care when counseling of coordination of care dominate the encounter and they can only count their own time that is face to face. Well, with the changes slated for 2021, time may be used whenever the provider chooses as they no longer have to include that counseling and coordinating care dominated the encounter. And guess what? They will now get to include all time spent on the date of service. So providers will be able to include time when more than one individual performs a distinct part of the e &M service. Another change is removing the history and exam as key components. The AMA is changing the overall level of service scoring process by no longer requiring history and exam to be counted as key components. Keep in mind as of 2019, this year. So CMS has advised us that all components of the history may be documented and or completed by someone other than the reported provider. And as long as the provider is updating, supplementing, or approving the recorded chief complaint, history of present illness, review of systems, and past family and or social history. So if the whole history is no longer considered to be provider level work, then there would be no need to continue to make it a documentation requirement. Now is there? We have talked extensively about clone documentation, and one of the areas in which this is prevalent is in the exam. So the elimination of the exam as a key component may help to eliminate the clone documentation issue. We need to remember that we have to educate our providers to understand that this is not the elimination of history and examination from the documentation entirely. It's really just that each encounter should still include a history and exam, but they are just no longer any scoring requirements. Remember, we have to keep the medical necessity for the e &M service intact. So then this brings us to the new definitions of the medical decision-making component. The AMA is proposing wording changes to the three medical decision-making elements, and the changes are as follows. Number and complexity of problems addressed, the amount and or complexity of data to be reviewed and analyzed, and risk of complications and or morbidity or mortality of patient management. 
these wording changes are going to be quite interesting. So stay tuned as we progress in this area. And the last change is that the AMA has made the decision based on utilization to delete code 99201 as it appears that this code is rarely reported and therefore no longer needed. So there you have it, the new AMA proposed changes for office and outpatient service evaluation and management codes for 2021. What do you think? Are you on board with these changes? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to know your thoughts. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed to our channel, click that subscribe button and be a part of our community. I'm Clarice Warner, the girl with the pearls, the founder and education director of the Professional Reimbursement Network, LLC, where coding education is key, providing you with information, tips, and strategies on how to become a certified marketable medical coder, reminding you to be safe, be kind, and don't wish for it, work for it. Until next time, take care. Are you interested in medical coding, but not sure where to start? And scared of wasting time and resources? Let me help you with the right steps to become a certified marketable medical coder. Learn more at bit.ly slash five steps coder.